Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. Sometimes a church dies for a reason. I have a friend in Syracuse named Sandy. Sandy has an adult daughter named Diane. Now, like my own daughter, Diane has autism and mental disability. Well, when Diane was a young girl, Sandy went to a church and she asked for baptism for her daughter, Diane. Now, this was an Episcopal church in Syracuse. The priest would not do it. Maybe because little kids with autism are pretty disruptive and it's almost impossible for them to sit quietly during a church service. Maybe it's because a little kid with autism and mental retardation cannot understand basic Christian beliefs. I don't know. But for whatever reason, that church would not baptize Diane. That church closed maybe 25 years ago. I'm sure there were a lot of reasons. But when I lived in Syracuse, and I drove past that old church building, which is now owned by an African-American congregation, I always thought I knew why it closed. They refused to baptize my autistic friend, Diane. Sometimes a church dies for a reason. I had the honor of baptizing Diane as a 30-something adult. It was when I was rector of St. Paul's in Syracuse. It was a great day. I have a picture in my office from that day. I'm holding Diane's hand after baptizing her. And what you can't see is that the whole congregation is applauding wildly. Sometimes, I think, the only reason I left you for that year and served in Syracuse was just so that I could have the honor of baptizing Diane. We're still friends. Sandy and Diane come down most summer times to, to visit St. Mark's and be part of the Eucharist on Sunday. And one Sunday right here, when the collection was being taken, they were sitting in the congregation and Sandy gave their offering envelope to Diane to put it in the offering plate. Diane put it in the plate and said, rather loudly, body of Christ given for me. Now with her tremendous heart, she told us the truth in that moment. With that special spiritual connection that so many people with autism seem to have, she connected giving money in church to the body of Christ given for her. Our money really is us. Our money represents our time, our work, our power, if you will. When Diane put that money in the collection plate, she was putting herself in that collection plate. And she felt that at the same moment, Christ was giving himself to her. Body of Christ given for me. The act of giving to Christ and receiving from Christ makes the body of Christ happen right here, right now. And that is what Jesus teaches. That church in Syracuse missed a real treasure when they refused to baptize Diane. Sometimes a church dies for a reason. Jesus talked a lot about money, you know. It surprises people, actually, if you do the adding up. How much he talked about money. He knew all about the power that money gives us, the power money has over us, the power we exercise through our money. Take today's story from Matthew's Gospel. On one level, it's a verbal duel between the people in charge and Jesus. They're trying to trap him and get him in trouble with the imperial authority with a trick question. But Jesus becomes the trickster and turns it back on them. You know, it's not really, though, just a trickster rebuttal. In that moment, Jesus really teaches us about money. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and give to God what is God, what belongs to God. 
What belongs to God the Creator? Well, everything, of course. Everything belongs to God the Creator. Jesus puts God's claims above all others, like all the prophets did before Him. And if that challenges the religious people in charge, well, that's what all the prophets before Him did as well. When we give money, we give ourselves. When we give money to God and church, we give ourselves to God and church. And it's because everything we have comes to us as a gift anyway. Ultimately, if you trace it back a little bit. My friend Diane gets that. She put the money in and she said, body of Christ given for me. We have come to that time of the year when we ask you to consider your financial commitment to St. Mark's. Some of you have already turned in your pledge cards. The vestry thanks you very much. The vestry hopes you will be as generous as you can. We want to continue to be a strong church and a giving church. Sometimes a church dies for a reason. I know of one in Syracuse that did. But sometimes a church lives for a reason. I think we've got good reason here at St. Mark's to keep living. A caring community, honoring God and serving the world. A church to lean on in the hard times. A church home for people of all ages and stages. A church that can be the body of Christ. Sometimes a church dies for a reason. Sometimes a church lives for a reason. We've got good reason here in this church. I hope you will join in to the best of your ability. It's an honorable thing. It's a meaningful thing. It's a St. Mark's thing. Body of Christ given for me. Amen, Diane. We turn to page 358 in the prayer book and stand together for the creed. <clears throat> 